Hello and welcome to Projects in Java. Today we're starting our database project. Databases are everywhere. Everyone is using them to keep track of transactions and to keep track of other records. So it's a very good skill to have. We're not going to focus too much on the SQL part. What we're going to do is set up our Java application to access the database and run SQL statements on it. So let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to use. We are going to use MySQL. So you can download it from this website, set it up, install it, get your server running. Here is the workbench and you can see that my server is running right now. And let's take a look at the complete app. So the first thing that comes up is this dialog box as a host name. We're trying to connect to this computer so that's the local host. We have the port 3306, that is the default that MySQL uses. We have the database called test, and the username called root. And we enter in our password. And you can see here how it tells us that we successfully connected to the database. We enter in a query here. And we can hit execute. Now when you hit execute, it fills out a J table with the information that you requested. We can reset. And we'll run another query. And so this is a very simple project. All it does is it takes this statement and executes it against the database. Now there's a lot of other parts to it. We have to connect to the database, load the driver for that database. So that's what we're going to focus on with this project. Of course, you can use this project for a lot of other things. You can create something like a sales tracker. I did that once where the uh, users would have a form that they fill out. It uploads to the database and they can also run the report to see their stats for a certain day. So let's go ahead and start our setup. We're going to create a new Java project. Now for this we are going to have to use an external library. It's the driver for MySQL and I have the jar file here. You can just drag and drop it in the source folder. You right click it and go to build path, add to build path. And now we're ready to start using that once we start building our database application. Next I want to take a look at the classes that we're going to be using. Our first class is a main class, and so this is what connects everything together. It also launches our JFrame. We also have a database class, and what this does is it displays the records and executes the queries. We have a connector, which uses a driver to connect to the database. And we have a connect dialog. That's the first menu that comes up that prompts for all the user's information. So the connector will use that and connect to the database and then the database will use the connector to execute the queries and the main puts everything all together create the main class so new class in the main class we're going to have a main method In here, we're going to create a JFrame. Okay, and let's set up the JFrame. So, first we'll set the size. We also need to set the default close operation. And we'll set this to visible. OK, 
Okay, and so now we have our database JFrame. And so now we have our database JFrame. Uh, we are going to add some more things to this class to complete the setup. But first, we need to create our other classes. So let's create the database class. And so this class is going to go into the JFrame that's in the main class. So we need to create this as a JPanel. So extends JPanel. And we'll import all of Swing. And we're going to have a JText area, which we'll create as static. Call this SQL. This is going to be for our SQL statement. We'll also put in a J label. And this label will be to tell the user what to enter. We also need two J buttons, one to execute, and one to reset. and a JTable to store the results. Next, we'll create a constructor. And we'll add these to the JPanel. So first, we'll add the prompt. And then we'll add the text area. We'll also add both buttons. And actually, we want to add SQL as a scroll pane. So we'll call this S pane. So let's create that scroll pane. And we'll create that just in case the user has a lot of text in their SQL statement. We'll also set a preferred size. So spane.set preferred size. And that takes a dimension, so new dimension. And we'll do the same thing for the J table. We'll put that below the button.
And so now that we have this created, we need to add it to the main class. So we have our database D panel equals new database. And we'll add that to frame. And let's test this. I think I launched it twice. So let's make our J table a little bigger. Let's launch it again, and there we go. Let's create a new class. And this is going to be connect dialog. So connect dialog is going to extend J dialog. And it's going to implement action listener. And the action listener is going to be for the buttons. Okay, now we're going to need some labels and some text field. There's going to be a few of them. First one is going to be the host name. And so each of these labels is going to have a text field. So let's add those. And we're going to change this import to import all of Swing. Next, we're going to create the label for the port. Now the table. And then the username and password. And for the password, instead of a regular text field, we're going to use a password text field.
Okay, and that's all the information for our form. Now we're going to create the buttons. So we have an OK button and a Cancel button. We also need a Boolean variable. We're going to call this is cancelled and we're going to set it to true. And so this Boolean variable will keep track if the user has pressed OK or not. So once the user does press OK, we'll set this as false. And we use that as part of the main class. We also need a properties object. And so we're creating this properties object so that we can pass one object with all the information of the database. Now let's create the constructor. We're first going to have a JFrame called Owner, then a string called Title, and Properties P. And we'll call the super constructor with this information. So Owner, and Title, and True. Set some size and location variables. And set our properties in this class to the one we passed in. Next, we're going to work with the buttons. We're going to set some preferred sizes. So set preferred size equals new dimension. And do 75 by 25. And then we're going to add the action listener. And we're going to set it to this. We're going to do the same thing for the cancel button. Next, we're going to add everything to the connect dialog box. But before we do that, we're going to create two panels. One's going to be a grid layout. That's going to have all the text fields and the labels. And then the other one is going to have the buttons. The reason why we're going to do this is because we don't want the buttons to be in the same grid layout. So let's create those two panels. Call it C panel and the second one C panel 2. And we're going to set the layout of the first panel. And there's going to be a new grid layout. We'll make that 5 by 2. OK, 
Okay, now let's add all of the text fields and the labels. And copy this a few times. And then we'll add the buttons to the second C panel. So we'll add the OK button and the cancel button. And finally add it to this. So first we'll add the C panel. And we use a border layout. Add it to the north. And we'll add the second scene panel to the south. Let's work on the action perform method next. And so for this, we're going to check the source of the action performed. So E dot get source. And if that is equal to the OK button, we're going to set is canceled to false. And the only other button that can be pressed is cancel. So either way we are going to dispose of this dialog box. To test this we need to add it to our main class. So let's add it here after the frame. So connect dialog dialog is equal to new connect dialog. We're going to pass it this frame, a title, and a property. Let's create that property also. And so after this dialog box is closed, we're going to see if is canceled is still equal to true. So if dialog is canceled, we're going to exit. So system.exit, zero. We also need to set the dialog box to visible, so dialog.setVisible equals to true. Let's run it. So here's our form. We press the OK button. And here's our database. Let's try that again. We press the Cancel button. Nothing happens. and create this class, so new class. We're going to call this connector. First thing we're going to have in here is a connection. And we're going to import from com.mysql.jdbc. We're also going to have a statement. And 
And we're going to have a few strings. We're going to create these as static. We have a URL, the database, username, password, host name, port, and driver. Next, let's also create a constructor. And this is going to take a properties class. And a string. This is going to be the password. And now we're going to take information from the property. So database equals props.getProperty. This is going to be database. Same thing for username. Our password is going to equal to the password string. We're going to get our host name from the properties. And also our port. And then our driver is going to be equal to com.mysql.jdbc.driver. And our URL is going to be JDBC MySQL colon slash slash plus the host name plus the colon plus the port. Plus the slash and then the database name. Next we're going to create a function to open the connection and this is going to return a boolean. And so here we're going to call a driver manager and we're going to register the driver. We're going to cast java.sql.driver. To class for name. And we're going to pass it driver. Dot new instance. We're going to surround this with the try and catch.
Next, we're going to get the connection. So, connection is equal to driver manager dot get connection. Now we're going to pass this our URL, then our username and our password. Okay, it looks like we need to change two of our imports. So here we'll change these to java.sql. And so if we're able to get through that, we'll return true. And before we return true, we'll print out that we've connected. And so in the exception, if connection equals no, We'll return false. And the last thing we'll add here is stat for the statement. So you go to connect.createStatement. So let's go ahead and add this to our main class so we can test this. And we'll do this after this if statement. So we'll have a connector. We'll call this con equal to new connector. And we're going to pass it the dialog dot get props. And new string. Dialog dot pass dot get password. And so we need to create this get props function in the connect dialog class. And so this is going to be public and it's going to return a properties. get props and so we're going to set properties we're going to do the database first and call database dot get text and actually we need to change this label this label should be database label and I'll change the text field to database I'll change that here also Here we also need to set the host name. That's going to be host.getText. Same thing for port. and our username.
Then we're going to return props. And so in the main class, we're going to call open in an if statement. So if con.open, and we're going to say if this is equal to false, we are going to exit. Okay, and let's test this out. Okay, and it shows that we connected to the database. And in our database, the first thing we're going to do is add a connector to the constructor. And so here we're going to pass it con. And we'll have a static connector here. And our connector is going to be equal to the one we pass in. And before we add our buttons to the J panel, we'll add some action listeners. So here in this function, we'll call execute. And we'll create that method right now. And then we need to also add a reset action listener. And so in the reset action listener, we want to take a model from the table. So we need to add that also. That's a default table model. And so our reset function is just going to empty out the table. And to do that, we just need to set the columns and rows to zero. So set column count equals zero. And row count equals zero. And now that we have our action listeners, we'll add the execute method. Make that private. And so the first thing we're doing here is reset the table. And then when you get the SQL statement, It's sql.getText. Then here we need a try. And a catch with a SQL exception. And so here we're going to get a result set. 
and that is exactly what it sounds like. It's a result set that returns after the query. So a result set rs is equal to dc dot execute query. And we need to create that function execute query. And that's going to be in the connector. So it's just going to be public. It's going to return a result set. We'll call that execute query. I'm going to pass that a string. And that is going to return that dot execute query. Okay, and we'll create another function. Call it execute update. Now it's going to run stat dot execute update. And now let's go back to our database class. So after I have our result set, we need to upload that into the J table. And to do that first, we need to create the columns. To do that, we need a result set metadata. That's going to equal to rs.getMetadata. And so this metadata will allow us to get the number of columns. And with that, we can create a for loop. So int i is equal to 1. And we'll correct this, rsmd. So rsmd dot get. column count. So i is less than or equal to rsmd that get column count i plus plus. And so in the for loop we're going to add columns to model. So model dot add column. It's going to be rsmd dot get column name at i. And so now that we have the columns, we're going to get the data. So while rs.next. We're going to create a string array. So string data. And that's going to be the size of the columns. Then we're going to take this same for loop. And so here we're going to take the element at i minus 1 in data and set that equal to rs.getString at i. Then now we can add a row. So model dot add row. And we're going to pass it 
the string array. Here we can add a system that up to print the error. Okay, and so let's test this, see if it works. So I'm connecting to a localhost, this port number, I'm going to use the database RPG. The username I'm going to use is root, and I have my password. So select star from item to enter our table is filled out. Now if we type in an error, we get you have an error in your SQL syntax. So let's try that query again. Okay, and let's test the reset button. And so the reset button races the table. We also want to add functionality for update. So here we're going to add an if statement. So if s.link it's greater than or equal to 6. And s.substring from 0 to 6. Is equal to select. So let's go over that again. If s.length is greater than or equal to 6, we're going to check to see if the first six characters are equal to select. If it is, we're going to run a query. And we're going to have an else here. We're going to execute an update. Of course, if there's an error in the syntax, it's going to get printed here in the console. Okay, and let's add ignore case here. And let's test this out. We're going to use the same query from earlier. We're going to try to update one of these. So update item set type is equal to staff where item ID is equal to 3330 execute. I'm going to call this query again and see if it updated. And so now this says staff. So we were able to update and call queries. And that completes our project. I hope you had fun creating this, and I hope to see you in future videos.